Good morning. Welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Tuesday, May 26, 2020, and I am your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Chaken Analytics. Find me on Twitter. I'm at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Chaken Analytics. Head over to chakenanalytics.com forward slash today. Sign up for a free email where we get a lot of the content for this show, as well as give you daily stock ideas to consider that hits your inbox every trading day before the market opens. So U.S. equities were mostly higher in Friday's trading as we get back at it uh, after a three-day weekend. Uh, market did finish near the highs of the day on Friday. REITs and utilities outperformed while energy and financials lagged. Treasuries were mixed with the curve flattening. The dollar was little changed against the yen, but stronger on the euro and sterling crosses. Gold was up 80 basis points and WTI crude was down 2%, but did post a fourth straight week of gains. Now, as we get to the desk this morning, uh, getting back to it in, uh, in the US, futures are up about 1.9% coming out of the holiday weekend. And that was on the heels of some big gains last week. S&P 500 in pre-market trading is back above the 3,000 level and the 200-day moving average for the first time since early March. Asian markets were higher overnight and European markets are seeing good gains here uh, this morning, building on their rallies from yesterday. Remember, we were closed yesterday here in the U.S., uh, but rest of the world was open. Treasuries are weaker with the curve steepening. The dollar is under pressure against the euro. Uh, flattish against the yen. Gold down 60 basis points, crude oil up 2.7% after that 12.5% rally last week. And as we dive into the structure of the S&P, uh, we are, as I said, trading above the 200-day moving average in pre-market activity. Now, the close kept us at the top of that kind of um, band here, right? In, right near the 2950 to 3000 zone, right? So for, from a closing basis, uh, that resistance zone remains intact, 29.50 to 3,000, right? 200-day moving average, 29.99. Now, what you'll notice is that the 200-day moving average actually ticked up, uh, even though uh, we remain below it. And that's a function of uh, some of these weaker prices back here falling off and us being relatively flat uh, over the past 200 days. So you get this phenomenon where the older data falls off, you get the new data points, uh, coming on that are slightly higher. So the 200 day moving average actually ticked up on the day. Uh, support uh, 2800 to 2850 still kind of the case that we're looking at for now. Below that, you have to start thinking about 20, 2490 to 2670. Uh, we are near overbought levels based on the 13 period CCI and its three day exponential moving average. And shaken money flow is flat. We had a brief dip into uh, bearish territory here and then came back to flat. Now, that's been an interesting phenomena uh, over the past year or so, uh, where trips into negative territory for shaken money flow have been short lived, um, not necessarily seeing an immediate bounce, right? And the sell off in March with a short lived blip and then continued lower, uh, but just something to keep an eye on from an indicator standpoint. So I would call the indicators mixed. I think it's uh, pre-market trading is going to get a lot of people excited. What I will note is that uh, large and small speculators uh, have remained net short and, and in fairly decent size since the low. They were caught massively net short down here, but they've stayed short. So I have to start to wonder if a break above 3,000, if a break above the 200-day moving average induces a bit of short covering, which opens the door to kind of 3,100, 3,110, uh, which is the next area that we'd be targeting on a break of the 3,000 level. Taking a look at our market in a minute now, what are we writing about? Well, SPY trades to the top of the resistance zone. We touched on that on a closing basis. Cyclical sectors continue to show near-term improvement. Uh, and I think that's important as it would speak to a broadening out of participation to the upside in the market. Now, we've been talking about that for a couple of weeks in our notes uh, we're going to highlight it here today on the show a little bit. Healthcare falls from the consolidation area, and we have to wonder if there's more to come. The Qs remain the strongest of the main market ETFs, and as I said, futures do point to a higher open here today. Looking at the power bars now for the major indices, uh, Dow still skewed to the bearish side from a power bar perspective after losing six basis points on Friday. S&P 500 tax on 20 bips still stays bearish. 
uh, 69 to 150. NASDAQ, 32 to 14. Bulls to bears as the NASDAQ outperformed slightly. Small caps outperformed a little bit more. 442 to 304. Bulls to bears there. Bonds uptick, sending yields lower. And it was the defensive areas of the market kind of leading the charge on Friday. Uh, as I said, REITs and utilities outperforming. Real estate up 2.1%, or call it 2.2%, really. Uh, but no bulls, 15 bears there. According to the chicken power bar, large cap stocks are more bearish than small cap stocks. Major indexes across the board are mixed. Taking a look at our stock of the day now, and um, this is one that just looks interesting to me from a setup standpoint. And if the market wants to go higher and money's going to continue to flow into the equity market, you have to think that these big guys are going to continue to do well. Microsoft, MSFT is a stock that I'm highlighting in my note today. It has a bullish rating, strong trend, strong industry group. We've talked about software quite a bit. I've given you the checklist here, right? For those of you who you know are maybe new to looking at charts or newer to kind of looking at them through the, through the lens of Chaken Analytics, the top of this box tells you what you want to own or at least consider owning, right? Bullish stock outperforming the market and in a strong industry group. And then the timing portion tells you you know, when you want to kind of start to take a look at it. And ideally, we like them when they're oversold, right? And our indicator is moving towards an oversold position. Uh, we like them when they're above the long-term trend line, and that long-term trend line is rising. Uh, and money flow is strong, meaning the stock is under accumulation. If you think about what that boils down to, uh, it's fundamentally sound stocks that become oversold within the context of uptrends. Uh, Microsoft is the stock that I'm highlighting in my note today for Chicken Analytics clients, and for those of you who have taken part in the 14-day uh, free trial, you will read that as well as the rest of my sector rotation work uh, later in the day when you get this note. Taking a look at our sector tracker now, speaking of sector rotation, and speaking of those economically or cyclically sensitive areas of the market starting to perk up, take a look at industrials at the top of the list, right? Energy at the top of the list over the past five days of trading. Now, REITs are in there as well, a little bit of a rebound. Discretionary continues to actually improve. We talk about retail last week on this show. We talk about the strength in Amazon. So that area of the market continuing to show some signs of improvement. Continue, uh, middle of the road, comms, financials, materials. We talked about last week, actually, uh, on Tuesday, how we were seeing the improvement there. We'll take a look again a little bit later on. Tech, utilities, staples, and healthcare at the bottom of the list. With healthcare, the only sector lower over the last five days. Uh, and that's kind of interesting to me in light of the chart of healthcare uh, that we're going to look at a little bit later on in the show. Now, our industry in focus today, telecom services, uh, which over the past six months has outperformed the S&P 500 by nearly four and a half percent. Power bar ratio, which measures future potential, is weak, however, as there are eight bulls and nine bears. Let's, I mean, let's call it neutral, right? Technically, it's weak, but you know, let's call it neutral. It's ranked number 12 of 21 subsectors and has moved down two slots over the past week. Some of the names there we don't want to touch, Harmonic Light, HLIT, Iridium Communications, IRDM, both with very bearish ratings, and Motorola Solutions, MSI with a bearish rating. However, if we look at the chart, it's a little bit more of a nuanced picture, if you will. Now, XTL has a bullish ETF rating and the trend is strong as it trades above this now rising long-term trend line. Overbought, oversold is middle of the road. It's been an outperformer, as we've said, but money flow is under some pressure here. Uh, so when I see kind of a sector that's a mixed bag like this, some puts and takes, uh, I don't necessarily want to disregard it completely, especially when it is outperforming, but uh, I think you really need to focus in on the stocks that are bullish, right? And there are eight stocks that are holdings of the fund that are bullish, and I've given them to you here, right? Names like Adtra and Sieta, TDS, right? These are the names you want to focus on. I mean, Orbcom is a, is a sub $3 stock, but you have seven other names here that may make sense um, in taking a look at. Taking a look at our what's trending now, Friday's S&P 500 movers and shakers, AMT, upgraded opto sent that stock higher. No real news on Agilent to send it higher by five and a quarter percent. Abumid, uh, didn't see anything company specific to drive the stock higher on Friday. However, I will note the company is hosting a corporate event this week. I uh, believe it is taking place tomorrow. Uh, 
L Brands continues to follow through from its earnings announcement last week, and Equinix EQIX uh, maybe going along for the ride with AMT on its upgrade. Equinix EQIX, uh, I don't know, goes up uh, by nearly 4% on the day. Um, kind of a tech focused REIT theme there, if you will, right? American Tower uh, is um, you know, a tower company, a cellular tower company. Equinix data center, so tech-focused REITs, maybe a little bit of a theme there that makes sense to start digging in on. Loser side of the board, HPE earnings, uh, send the stock lower. They did catch an upgrade here today. Win, gaming stocks were weak on Friday, um, especially with some of the China, U.S.-China trade news late last week, tilting to the negative side, uh, names with exposure to China coming under pressure. STT, nothing company specific to drive that stock lower. VNO, same story. Didn't see anything company specific there to take four and a half percent out of the name on a Friday. And Under Armour uh, priced a convertible. Uh, that stock is very bearish, uh, down nearly four percent on Friday on the heels of pricing that convert. So let's dive in on Tuesdays, and it is Tuesday, three day weekend. Hope everybody enjoyed it. We're we're back in the saddle. Uh, on Tuesdays we do our sector work and look at how sectors are rotating on a relative basis, right? So we're looking at healthcare here. And we looked at this chart last week because we started to talk about this consolidation uh, catching our attention, especially in light of that consolidation playing out with lower highs in the RSI for the ratio. Now, the ratio is above the 200-day moving average, which is rising, but we have fallen through the bottom of that consolidation zone for now, beginning to confirm this negative divergence between price and momentum. So healthcare has been an area of the market that we have liked. Uh, for me now, I think it makes sense if you have some healthcare names, make sure your risk management process is finely tuned uh, and honor your risk management process because I see healthcare starting to break down on a relative basis, confirming in momentum divergence. You start to get you know, your stops or your risk management process starts to trigger in healthcare names that you own, I think you want to honor it, right? Manage the risk in the way that works best for you, your style and your time frame. Uh, you know, and I will see we're struggling here on an absolute basis to kind of break back up near the highs. Uh, so something to just to keep in mind here uh, as a area of the market that we have liked a lot uh, is beginning to show signs of relative stress. And I think what that means is you just have to honor the message of the market. Uh, I personally own some healthcare names and my stops are set. And if those stops are triggered, I will manage my risk. And that's just how the process is going to work out. And that's playing out as cyclical sectors begin to improve. Take a look at uh, materials here. Uh, materials on a relative basis, right? Series of higher lows as it consolidates below the 200 day moving average on a relative basis. Energy, series of higher highs and higher lows below the 200 day moving average. So it remains to be seen if these trends are simply just counter trend in nature uh, or if there is more to it, right? That, that'll largely play out over time as key levels are breached. Uh, but to me, seeing materials, seeing energy, seeing industrials start to get into gear with the broader market, that would be an encouraging sign from a breadth standpoint. Uh, so what potentially we're seeing here is money rotating out of winners like healthcare and into some of these beaten down areas of the market. So we'll see if that continues to play out, but we are early in the process. So I wanted to begin to point it out. Finally, the Qs remain leadership as well, right? Uh, breaking top side relative to the S&P 500 above the 50 and 200 day moving averages as the RSI holds bullish ranges. Now there is a divergence here that we are watching, but Q's look to be the first of the major market ETFs to test their February highs should they continue higher here today. Uh, so that's just something that we uh, continue to like and continue to watch. That'll wrap us up. Take us for a trial, chickenanalytics.com forward slash test drive. I'll be back with you tomorrow. Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with StockCharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds. We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.